So with Theresa May losing the all-important vote last night on the deal that she had presented after two years of negotiation, Jeremy Corbyn has tabled a motion of no confidence. This has heavily divided critics, who actually think the Tories might support her, so that we don't end up with a Jeremy Corbyn government. This is not the subject of today's video, but I wanted to alert you to this as a follow-up to yesterday's video, and also let you know that Tonight, 9.30pm GMT, I will be doing a stream about not just the vote of no confidence, but also, if it happens, PMQs, although I don't think that will happen, in favour of a lengthy all-day debate until 7pm on the motion of no confidence in the government. If Jeremy Corbyn loses this, by the way, he's going to look really, really stupid. If he wins, we're all going to look really, really stupid, because it's even more likely at that point that he'll become Prime Minister and essentially nix Brexit. Now, in a complete swerve on the nature of that particular subject, we're going to talk about religious freedom and the right for someone to express their own beliefs. I would like to believe that the majority of you listening, along with myself, tend to believe that everyone is well within their right to express their beliefs freely, even if it is in the name of a god. They can say it. Quite frankly, I don't mind as long as they don't mind me telling them that I don't believe their god exists, and then explaining my reasons as to why I don't believe their god exists. I don't need to rehash my own reasons, to be honest, because there are plenty of debates between creationists, religious folk, flat earthers, and then atheists, and non-religious types who don't care for the atheist or anti-theist labels, because edgy, yo. With certain religions, certain actions are becoming more and more synonymous, these are inherently dangerous, which then leads to a poisoning of that belief. Now, those beliefs, certainly Abrahamic religions, are quite vile in their religious texts. One in particular because it's not reformed, and this is the one we're going to focus on, so I'm not going to name it because I don't need to bother really, do I? We all know exactly what I'm talking about. No religion is truly innocent when it comes to acts of terror, but how those acts of terror take place are important. You can trace it back centuries. Religious wars, religious terrorism is everywhere. And it's kind of sad that you've gotten to the point that you can't just agree to disagree and move on, that you feel the need to exert yourself over another person. Now, the rather unique circumstances surrounding this other religion is that you want to impose your beliefs onto other people, but to do that, you aren't going to be there when people impose their will of your faith on others who do not share your belief, because you are going to kill yourself as a martyr for the greater good. Which is an insult to the Tao, I know, but let's face it, when you shout Allahu Akbar and blow yourself up, you're hardly doing anyone a favour, and you are not there to rebuild the world in your prophet's image, or in your God's name. We all know that to be the ultimate in your faith, you need to be the perfect Mohammed, and be like as Irish as you can be, lol. Now the reason I bring all of this up is because, and I was going to cover this by the way uh, a few days ago, had I not been distracted by Brexit, where a man in Switzerland got off a bus and decided to say Allahu Akbar. The man in this particular article has been identified as Orham E, which may not be his actual name and merely a name used to protect him from backlash, which I understand. I think I'd have been more concerned had he said it on the bus. Now yes, a literal translation is God is greatest. However, much like other words, it has been appropriated. Let's take the word nigger. That word, translated from black, has been used to describe slaves, certain types of slaves, but has been appropriated by people within black communities as a term of endearment between fellow brothers? Surely at that point you're just calling each other fellow slaves which is wrong on many levels. Doesn't matter. The point is, words can be reappropriated to suit a goal. This man being of a certain faith, yeah. In Europe especially, with the increase in terror attacks committed by that faith, those, those warped and distorted beliefs that are totally not in line with what their religious texts say, right? Anyway. He got off the bus and said those words, words that are synonymous with terror attacks, terror attacks which are on the rise in Europe. By doing so, he got into a bit of trouble with the police, where he was charged with a public nuisance offence. This took place in Schaffhausen, 
and unsurprisingly people were alarmed at it. Now, whether or not the police were right to charge him with a public nuisance offence is entirely subjective. I think context of the situation is important, and it would be nice to get to a point where people can express their religious beliefs without scaring people, but at the same time, since Allahu Akbar has become synonymous with people detonating themselves, or driving a truck through people, perhaps understanding the current climate would have done this man wonders to the point where he wouldn't have had to pay out what is roughly a £170 fine, 150 Swiss francs of which are on the fine and 60 Swiss francs being on the cost, the total of that being roughly £170. Now in a statement Orhan gave to 20 minute 10, he said, suddenly the police officer called me over and she asked what I meant by that phrase, continuing to say, we use Allahu Akbar as a greeting in almost every other sentence. Oh, like the Polish used the word kurva, okay. I was threatened with prison if I didn't pay the fine. I was born here and I've never experienced anything like it. Well, then you are exceedingly dumb for using the phrase. How could you not understand the current situation and the current climate to be so naive as to use that phrase in a wider space? If you were in a mosque, I don't see a problem. And of course, you should be well within your right to say it freely. But then, of course, there are consequences and I'm sure it would be the same, the police even pointed out that it would be the same with profanity, and I will quote what they say in a moment. Granted, what you said isn't a profanity, an expression of your belief, but it has lost all meaning in Europe. And I would point out that you know this, you know what has happened in the UK, you know what happened in France, actually in Germany too, in most of the major European countries. I know Switzerland is somewhat isolated, but you'd have to be absolutely blind to not know this. So you are partially to blame for not understanding why people would have been scared with you saying Allahu Akbar. Now, because I think this is amusing and I just want to share it before I do the police part from the original article that I'm going to show, I want to show what um, Google translated the 20 minute 10 page where the article originated from, where it says all at once, armed officers drove up. They fumbled me, took my personal details, and told me to forgive myself. <laughs> Got to love Google Translate, everyone. It really does it justice. Of course, if anything, it just shows how complex one language is over the other. But it's amusing nonetheless. Oh, and to quickly continue what he said, we live in a free country where religious freedom applies. Police arbitrariness is out of place here. In the end, he paid the buses anyway because he did not want any further trouble. That's why Orhani is now going public. I was intimidated. I have to say, Princess, I'm not entirely sure it's a case of you being intimidated. I think you knew what you were doing and said it anyway as a cry for attention. Now, the police did put out a statement where they said at the time there was a possibility that people could be scared and terrified. The officer had to inspect the situation because of the phrase's connection to terror attacks in recent years. If someone's running around the square swearing, we'll bring them under control then too. Which does mean there is a somewhat consistent position on this. Unfortunately for Muslims, they are going to have to get used to the fact that that term is synonymous with terror attacks. Therefore, it is not recommended they say it. And to further prove that point, there are now consequences in some countries where shouting that in an open square or on a bus will get you into trouble because you are inciting fear. And that's not Islamophobic or religiously intolerant. It is the actions of those who have acted in the name of your faith and your God that have sullied your faith. Although I would say at the same time, since your faith condones it, maybe publicly addressing that, reforming, and I don't know, actually being proactive in tackling extremism instead of just fobbing it off as meh, isolated, and anyone who criticizes is Islamophobic would be perfect. Now, as earlier stated, I will be doing a stream later tonight on the Cthulhuan and Friends show. To those who joined me last night and helped me celebrate my birthday, thank you very much for joining. It was fantastic. So I hope everyone has a lovely Wednesday the 16th of January, and thank you all for listening.